You are watching Forbidden Knowledge TV. What's up, Billy Carson here, Forbidden Knowledge, live on Instagram. On Forbidden Knowledge Instagram, we have a couple of very special guests today. If I look tired, it's because I am. I just got done traveling and I'm sitting in the hotel room right now and I need to take a nap. <laughs> but we're going to get this thing done. What's up, Donald? What's up, Model Pro Surf La Free or LA Free? Ed Fun, Tony. Elizabeth Huckster just joined us. She's going to be joining us live here in a second. And we're going to have Dr. Daniel Amen. If you don't know who that is, you're going to find out right now. Let me get Elizabeth on here first. It's coming on now, now, now. <clears throat> Hello. Hey, what's going hey, on? Let me raise this up some. Let me see if I can get this up a little bit higher. Maybe you I can get No, I didn't get a chance to. Drop the chair as low as I can go. I'll sit back in the chair that way I can get in the, in the frame. How you doing? Oh, I'm lovely. How are you? Nice, nice. A little tired, as you can see. Already, <laughs> I think you look very handsome. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate that. You look beautiful. <laughs> thank you. Thank yeah. you. So today, I'm so happy that um, we got Dr. Amon to come mm -hmm. on with us. Uh, if for any of you guys who don't know, Dr. Amon is a 12-time best-selling New York Times author. And mm. I've read a lot of his books. And one of them that really sticks out in my mind is called The End of Mental Illness. And mm. he just goes deep into brain function and how, you know, really how to end your mental illness. I mean, really, yeah. really tips and tricks. It's so informative. So if you guys don't, you know, don't know him, definitely check him out. And I'm, I'm so glad that he agreed to come on with us today. Yeah, it's amazing. If you remember just I think it was maybe three weeks ago, I was at his clinic in California, yes. and I did a brain scan. I, I'm actually going to be on his show, his upcoming show called Scan My Brain, mm -hmm. and this is a show he's been doing for a while, yeah. and he scanned my brain, and he actually, I did the whole two-day thing where you take IQ tests, you take psychological batteries, you take attention yeah. tests, and, and they inject this... Um, radioactive isotope into you so that it can go into your brain so that they can scan you and actually see what parts of your brain are firing and all that good stuff. So mm -hmm. it was a big process to go through. And yeah. uh, the results were pretty astounding. I was pretty happy with what I found out about myself. It's a great biohack to learn how your brain works, how it functions. And even like I learned, what can I do to improve my brain? Right, exactly. That's why I was so happy that uh, we got to go out there because I've been following his work for a really long time. And the difference between Dr. Amen and your regular MRIs are the fact that MRIs take these pictures. They just take a quick snapshot of what your brain is currently doing and the state that it's in in that moment. But the difference between that and what Dr. Amen does with his spec scans are, is the fact that Dr. Amen actually shows you the functionality of your brain. So he can tell what's firing, what's not firing, why you may be certain ways, why you may be triggered by certain mm -hmm. things. I mean, you can see that all within the scan. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely a biohack because biohacking is basically becoming more aware of different things within your system to optimize mm -hmm. yourself. So what did he tell you? 5% more what? <laughs> yeah, he told me after analyzing my brain and he saw my, the way my frontal lobe worked, he said I had an executive lobe. Yes. People like me run big companies, are capable of multitasking and doing a lot of big things. Mm -hmm. uh, and he said that based off of what he sees, he can in improve my brain function by at least 5%, which is worth millions of dollars. Which yes. If you parlay that money, that turns into billions. So 5% is a huge amount of gain in a brain. I mean, 5% is like you know, almost a night and day difference. So I started working on his regimen. I started taking his supplements. I started following the recommendations that he gave me to do on my own to improve my brain function and, and some of the ways he taught me. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure it's going to do exactly what he said. This is, he's not the number one psychologist in the world for no reason. I mean, the guy is a genius, an absolute genius. 
Yeah, yeah. I respect his work so much. I mean, you're he's a 12-time best-selling New York Times <laughs> author. Yeah, 12. 12 best-selling books. I mean, just yeah. think about that in itself. That's mind-blowing. Just to have 12 books that become New York Times bestsellers, that's another level. Yeah, I mean, he's the only one that's really doing these functional brain scans, too, in, in yeah. America, at least that I know of. I haven't heard of anybody else doing anything like what he does. So, yeah. I mean, if you guys can can look him up, I'm in clinics. He has different clinics around the whole country. I know mm -hmm. that he's stationed mainly in California, but he does have other practitioners and psychiatrists that work with him that yeah. give brain scans as well. Um, but he, you know, you got to see him, which was cool because you're going to be on Scan My Brain. So that's yeah. awesome. And I'm going to tag him and put him in the comments here and pin the comment. Yeah, yeah. In it real quick so that people want to follow him doc underscore amen he's phenomenal his his work is phenomenal yes, his, yes. his facilities are amazing yes you know um yeah it just was a great great experience to be able to go there and to do those all that testing just to find out you know what could he saw my brain injury from my car accident yeah yeah, yeah. so i had a car accident that's what this scar is this eyelid is reconstructed I was ejected through the front of a car windshield back in like 1991. And um, the eyelid completely disintegrated as I went through the glass. Uh, I, I didn't have a seatbelt on. That's why I'm a big proponent of wearing seatbelts. Like as soon as I get any car, I don't care where I'm at, I'm putting my seatbelt on immediately. Because <laughs> I know what it feels like to get ejected from a damn car. It ain't fun. Yeah. And then I had to get the, you know, they had to do this surgery without any, um, any type of numbing agent or, or, or whatever. They have just disinfected, get the glass out, and then start pulling skin and then create what they call a starburst. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, but he, but when I, that impact happened in the front, it made my brain slosh against the back of my skull. And in the lower part of my skull, he saw a brain injury and he knew I had a brain, he knew I got hit in the head pretty hard. Fortunately for me, the impact came here and it went to, it was actually on this side. The impact came here and ended up with a small impact here in the back of the brain that didn't, for me, didn't impact any, any of my basic functions, you know? Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so I got very, I was very fortunate, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Very fortunate, yeah. yeah. I mean, thank yeah. God. People think that your brain feels like rubber and really it feels like butter. So mm -hmm. for you to have that small amount of damage and it didn't hit anything or or cause any damage to any areas that really affect you. I mean, yeah. you were super lucky. That's that's really, yeah. really lucky. And super so lucky. also, also what was interesting was the fact that, you know, you have one thing about you that, you know, <laughs> that isn't genius, which is your yeah. direction, your sense of direction. And that showed up mm -hmm. right in the scan. So that yeah. that blew my mind because really, you know, people can have these injuries and these things going on with their brains and it can mm -hmm. cause them to act in ways that they wouldn't naturally act in because of the damage to their brain. So right. really, I mean, it's just one big computer system. If one thing is dysfunctional, you're going to act dysfunctional in that way. So you have right. those little dimples, <laughs> those little dimples yeah. in the direction part of your brain. Yeah. It's yeah. Crazy. <laughs> I've been getting lost since I was a kid. I, I can't remember where anything is like in terms of my, my direction my sense of direction doesn't even exist and you've known me now for a, about a year and you've seen me get lost in ele coming out of elevators multiple times the same elevator yeah. and it's like <laughs> what's wrong with this guy but we doc Amin was able to answer that question because there's a little dimple right here mm -hmm. above the gps part of my brain mm -hmm. and so it's actually um a slight you know, I guess you want to call it a deformity or area of the brain that's that's not functioning properly with my sense of direction, which is why I get lost with everywhere I go. I mean, I, I used to, before the airport in Fort Lauderdale started um, this new system where they can read every single tag in the entire parking lot and tell you exactly where your car is just by punching your tag in. Mm -hmm. Before that came, I think I'm the reason why they made that system because I would call them so many times on every trip back home. Yeah. They knew my voice on the phone. As soon as I, as soon as I say, uh, I'm, I'm lost, I'm in, you know, garage, whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, we'll be right over, Mr. Carson. You know, they, they knew my voice. That's how scary it was. Right. Uh, you know, and I used to lose my car at malls, shopping malls all the time. Yeah. You know how I am. I mean, you've seen it. I, I got to really double check. Where did I, what interest did we just come into? Now I'm trying to be more cognitive as to paying attention a little bit more like, 
and I'll drive places and I'll miss, even with the GPS, I'll get lost. But yeah. it's all going to be explained because of this dimple, you know, on top of my head. So mm -hmm. we got Doc Armin here coming in. Let's get him on the live. All right. He's going to be joining us, and we're going to do a little talk, a little biohacking today, talk a little about brain lingo today. Brain lingo. Biohack yeah. from home. Hello, hello. How are you, Dr. Armin? Hi. So nice to see you both. Yes. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us tonight. So Billy and I, we usually do a Thursday evening biohack from home live on Instagram. So I really, really appreciate you coming and doing this with us. And yeah, just thank you so much. Well, it's great to see you again. And uh, I hope you're well. And I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe. And I've been taking advantage of the instruction you gave me, the supplement plan you gave me, mm -hmm. uh, your supplements, your, your, you know, your, your brain supplements, your multivitamins, uh, and just trying to you know, make those adjustments that you recommended for me so I can get that increase in brain function. Yes, yes. I actually tried your brain boost too, and I freaking mm -hmm. love it. I ordered a whole bunch of your supplements last week, so I can't wait for them to get in. Really, yeah. really excited for it. Yeah. Yes, I'm traveling right now. Right now, I'm in LA, and I'm traveling, and I'm taking the supplements everywhere I go. <laughs> you know, I've got all the that. supplements. Here. Yeah. yeah. Love, love your brain. Thank you. That's right. Absolutely. So, Dr. So what Amen. was it like seeing your brain? Oh. Well, I'll tell you, uh, it was interesting because at first I was like, when I when I first saw some of those brains and you saw they were so lumpy and everything, I was wondering if I was going to be lumpy. Um, but it was kind of exciting to finally see how my brain looked and also to understand like my frontal lobe, why it's so um, why it's so high functioning, and why I see things and do things a little bit differently. And when it comes to entrepreneurship and business and understanding certain things, than a lot of my, um, you know, other peers. And so now it starts to really make sense. And so seeing that gives you a little bit more confirmation that there's a, something a little slightly different with, you know, with me, at least in that particular area. Uh, other people have stronger parts than, than I have. But that particular area for me, it really worked out well because it's allowed me to fulfill my what I believe is my mission. And um, it was pretty exciting to see that. And also to actually be able to visualize that actual brain injury that I had when I was ejected from the windshield of that car. And also to find out why I can't, my sense of direction is horrible. You showed me that little dimple <laughs> right on top of the navigation center of my brain, which yeah. makes a lot of sense. I don't feel so crazy anymore, you know? So it, it really yeah. was well worth it. Well, it was such a joy for yeah. me. And so how can I be helpful to your audience tonight? So usually for these lives, we usually give people just tips and tricks from, you know, things that they can do from home. I know after this past couple of years, it's been so stressful for so many people. So we started this live just to try to give people help, you know, stuff that they can do from home. A lot of the holistic modalities are very expensive, you know, and it's hard for people to get around and get to them sometimes. So we do these just to really provide people some help and things that they can do at home. Well, I have all sorts of ideas. I, <laughs> I have a new book coming March 1st. Nice. New Happier. And it's really around these seven big ideas. And mm. the first one is know your brain type. So it was mm. so cool being able to see your brain. But most mm. people can't come to one of our clinics. And so what I discovered is there's five primary types. Balanced spontaneous that's my add group persistent that's my ocd ish group sensitive my sad group and cautious it's my anxious group so know where you are because happiness is different for all of those groups balance almost anything can make them happy a smile from someone else just makes you happy the spontaneous person novelty I need something, need to jump out of an airplane. I need a scary movie. I need uh, something new and different all the time. And a lot of entrepreneurs are spontaneous, but they're good at starting companies. They're not good at growing companies. And then there's the persistent person. They love routine. Spontaneous, loves surprises. Persistent, loves routine. 
and you surprise them, you actually make them unhappy. Sensitive, loves relationships, they need connection. The pandemic was a disaster for them. The social isolation was so hard on them. And the cautious, um, they need safety. And uh, I don't know if you know any preppers, but a lot of them are the cautious type. My wife tends to be that type. We had toilet paper before the pandemic because she's like, well, they're going to not have toilet paper. So <laughs> like, we had toilet paper. So <laughs> some anxiety is good, but a warm bath, a massage, soothing music, the scent of lavender flowers, that helps their type. So it's sort of like know your type and that will help you so much. The second principle is you got to take care of your brain. Because if your brain's not right, that you're not going to be happy, especially if you have damage to the front part of your brain, like football players, the soccer players, the hockey players, uh, um, you know, people have had bad concussions. You had great frontal lobes, uh, which is so important. And you've always been able to see ahead. Um, and I did a study of 500 patients People have low frontal lobe function, more unhappiness. And so the tip is just as you go through your day, ask yourself, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to eat this. I'm going to drink this. Is this good for my brain or bad for it? And if you can know the list, that three-second question, radically change and extend your brain and your life. Um, and most people don't know that Alzheimer's disease starts in the brain decades before you have any symptoms. And I mean, isn't it good to know, even at your age, you're not headed that way. And, you know, hopefully you'll love your brain even more mm -hmm. and push it off as you know, long as possible. If you live to be 85, you have a 50% chance, five zero percent chance of being diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Wow. Oh, you know, I, I'm 67. I don't like those odds. No. You know, it's like, <laughs> no, no, no. And I have a choice because what we're learning is Alzheimer's disease is really a lifestyle disease. Mm -hmm. uh, the third thing is supplement your brain. I'm so happy you started the supplement program. You're yeah. on them. You're taking them. We made those packets to make them easy to travel with everyone should take multiple vitamin. Everyone should be taking fish oil. Everyone should know your vitamin D level and to optimize it. And if you're African-American, you need five times the amount of sun to get healthy vitamin D as if you're a Northern European descent. And so measure it, get a blood test, and then work to optimize it. And so I'm of Lebanese descent. I need to take 7,000 international units of vitamin D a day to have a healthy level. Um, the fourth thing, love food that loves you back. You're in a relationship. I don't know if either of you have ever been in a bad relationship in the past, but yeah. I, I have. <laughs> and I'm not doing it anymore. I'm like married to my best friend. And yeah. I mean, I work that thing because it just makes me happy. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm damn sure not going to be in a bad relationship with food. I am not right. going to love food that hurts me. I'm mm -hmm. not going to love food that ages me. I'm not going to love food that makes me fat, depressed, or feeble-minded, which means I really need to learn which foods support my brain, like wild salmon, blueberries, nuts, seeds, many colorful fruits and vegetables as you can get. Mm -hmm. um, and which foods prematurely age me? Sugar, bread, pasta, potatoes, rice, things that quickly turn to sugar that make you more likely to be diabetic or obese. Five is so fun. And I know you do a lot of stuff on mindset. Uh, five is master your mind and gain psychological distance from the noise in your head. I was 28 I years old before someone told me I didn't have to believe every stupid thing I thought. 
<laughs> oh, yeah. you, you know, your brain is just sort of like the weather. You know, you'll get these storms and you'll get these thoughts. You're not enough. You're a fool. You're a failure. Whatever it is. I teach people how to kill the ants. But I have this great technique. Actually, it's not mine. I stole it from my 17-year-old niece. I adopted my two nieces because their mom and dad couldn't stop doing drugs and mm -hmm. being bad parents. And I just couldn't stand it. So I adopted them. And, you know, they grew up with a lot of trauma. And my niece, Alizé, came to me and said, we need to create a Department of Homeland Security for my mind. And so metaphorically, we hired TSA agents. So we don't let people into our lives that bring us down. And we don't let thoughts in our mind. And then she like hired, you know, metaphorically, Denzel Washington from The Equalizer and Rocky Balboa from the Rocky movies. So she has her own internal bouncers. <laughs> <laughs> to just assess, this helps me or this hurts me. And from habits, it's start every day with today is going to be a great day. Like direct your mind to what's right. And my favorite of all the techniques is whenever I go to bed, and I've been doing this for years, I just go, what went well today? So I'll say a prayer and then I'll go, what went well today? And I start at the beginning of the day. I just sort of go through my schedule, go through my day and go, what about today did I like? And, you know, like you, I'm busy. So I often, I get a great thing like this interview and then I don't really think about it because I'm like on to the next thing but it's just a time of reflection to really build the treasure of good moments, happy moments in my life. And the cool thing, it sets my dreams up to be more positive. And if you dream, it actually helps your brain clean itself, wash itself. Uh, Cause when you sleep, like they didn't really know why we slept until about 10 years ago when scientists found that when you sleep, fluid um, channels open up and your brain gets washed. And so if you're not sleeping, trash builds up and you're just more likely to make a bad decision. And so, but I love that. Even the night my dad died, my dad died early in the COVID pandemic and it was an awful day. And I remember that night I went to bed and I went, because it's my habit, right? We do our habits. I went, what went well today? And the voice in my head, you know, the critic is like, really, you're going to do that today? You're a bad human being. But it's my habit. And then I remember an interaction between my mother and the police officer that was actually hysterical. And um, all the texts I got from the people who loved me. And I just remember holding his hand before they took him away and it was so soft and then I went to sleep and it didn't mean I wasn't sad I was and it didn't mean I didn't mourn I did but it's this mental discipline right you have a healthy brain the hardware of your soul and now you have a healthy mind you're feeding it with supplements and food and sex is notice what you like about other people more than what you don't right yes. if you create happiness by noticing what you like about someone, you are going to be happier. And oh, by the way, you're shaping their behavior. You know, I collect penguins. I have a penguin behind me. Why do I collect penguins? I, I, I went to a show when my son was seven, like 30 years ago. And this penguin at Sea Life Park in Hawaii did all these really cool things. And I'm like, how did you get I went up to the trainer afterwards and said, how'd you get this penguin to do all these really cool things? And she said, unlike parents, whenever Freddie, his name was Fat Freddie, whenever Freddie does anything like what I want him to do, I notice him. I give him a hug and I give him a fish. Mm -hmm. And even though my son didn't like raw fish, I got it. When he did the right things, I wasn't paying attention to him because I was sort of like my dad, I was busy. And when he didn't do the right things, I paid a lot of attention to him because I didn't want to raise bad kids. So I was inadvertently teaching him to be negative as a way to get my attention. So I collect penguins as a way 
to remind myself, notice the good about other people in your life. I just guarantee you, if I noticed what I didn't like about my wife, I would be in an unhappy marriage. And if I notice what I like, my life is so much better. So at work, I have the no asshole rule. It's actually based on a book from a professor from Stanford called the no asshole rule. It's like, and the rule starts with me. I don't get to be an asshole. And I, I hire people who are kind, who are competent and passionate. So those are my three rules when I hire people. And then seven, and I think you really like seven, live each day based on clearly defined values, purpose, and goals. And so I go through in the book, how do you create your values? How do you know your purpose? And what do you want in your relationships, your work, your money, your physical, emotional, and spiritual health? What do you want? So you have to define it. And then every day you just go, does it fit? Does my behavior today fit the goals I have for my life? And for me, alcohol doesn't fit. Marijuana doesn't fit. Bad food doesn't fit. And it's not that I shouldn't do that, right? Because you say you shouldn't do something. You want to do something, right? God said you shouldn't go to the tree. The next seed in the Bible, they're at the tree getting in trouble. If God would have said, do you want her to wear clothes? You go, No. Uh, then he would have never gone to the tree. Got to stay focused on what you want. And it's not with someone else. What do you want? Does your behavior get you what you want? And those are the foundational principles I created for happiness. Wow. Wow. Uh, listen, that's incredible. I just got a, we just got a master class. If, if yeah. y'all are listening, you just got a master class. Because right now, I just soaked all that in. And some of the stuff you, you just dropped on me, that knowledge, I just downloaded all that information in my brain. And I'm already making adjustments and reprogramming certain parts of my life and changing things right now as we speak. Yes, yes. Yeah. I was doing the same thing, the same thing. I'm like, oh, crap, I do that. I got to stop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, was, that was profound. Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> yeah, really profound. So welcome. Yeah, thank you. That's huge. You know, a lot of the times, a lot of the things that are happening in our lives is because we're actually drawing it in with the way that we're thinking about a yeah. person. It could be a waitress or a waiter at a restaurant. We can go with going with the anticipation that the service is not going to be that great or that they're making too many mistakes. And we're inadvertently putting out the energy field that they're incompetent. And instead of complimenting them and reinforcing uh, positivity into them, we're actually putting out a negative vibe. This is just a rough example, causing them to make even more mistakes and more errors. Well, that Something as simple as that. It happened to us. Remember, we were getting bad service everywhere we went. So we started yeah. projecting that thought before we would even go like, oh, here we go again. Mm -hmm. and we would expect to get bad service. So we were looking at the negative instead of focusing on the positive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we were creating that problem for us all the yeah. time. I was like, I think we're creating this. Right. Yeah, we should. We should. We had to. We had to think about it. We had to correct ourselves. Yeah. 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 Another, you know, I think really useful principle I tell my patients. I got from my friend Byron Katie: argue with reality, welcome to hell. Mm. <laughs> and you know, like I used to get upset when they a flight would get canceled. And then I realized there was nothing I could do about it. Mm -hmm. And I've always, you know, I always have my laptop with me. It's like, go write a chapter in a book or, you know, get your email cleaned up or, you know, it's like if, if you're going to fight it and there's nothing you can do about it. And this pandemic uh, mm -hmm. with my nieces and my daughter, you know, I'd often go around the house and I would just say something and they'd respond. And I'm like, who survives a pandemic? And they would go, people who are flexible, right? Because yeah. when you argue with reality, welcome to hell. Mm -hmm. And so exactly. what can I do? And, you know, you probably know the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. difference. For two yeah. years, I prayed that prayer many times a day. Like, what can I do in this situation? 
whether mm -hmm. it's the vaccination or the masks or the lockdowns. I mean, I have 10 clinics around the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have people who work for me of all sorts of different political persuasions. And, mm -hmm. you know, when people are anxious, they can make bad decisions. Yeah. And so, you know, how can I be a voice of reason and consistency and love and inclusion? Another practical tip, you have no influence without connection. And mm -hmm. this, I, and I've never seen anything like this in 40 years being a psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not vax, you can't come see me. Or if you are vax, I won't hire you. Or, mm. and you know, f record numbers of families spent Christmas apart last year, not because of safety issues, but because they were mad at each mm -hmm. other. If you don't yeah. believe the way I believe, you're bad. Yeah. And um, another tip, don't watch the news in the morning. Because if you watch the news in the morning, you're 27% less happy in the afternoon. Wow. Mm. Um, wow. And, and you just have to know the news is no longer the news. The news is no longer the news. The news yep. is about scaring you. Yes. It's about directing you. And I mean, you have to find a source you like. Like I sort of like the BBC. Um, but I'm not going to stay there because, you know, they want to draw, you know, bring you in with negativity and they want to keep you there with fear. Yeah. And, and if you notice, they say the same thing, like over and over and over and over. Yeah. And there's an app I like called the Good News Network, where mm. if I want to start the day with something, it's the Good News Network. And I'm like mm. always texting my kids you know, some fun, cool story or um, picture. But, you know, that's what I want in my mind. Mm -hmm. And people go, oh, you're living in La La Land. Well, I actually live outside of Los Angeles, so I guess that's okay. <laughs> but, you know, I'm directing my mind rather than having um, big corporations direct my mind. Exactly. What you said is so key, even just that starting off the morning with something positive. That's why the first post of the day, I try to make it something positive or educational. Because sometimes on this network channel I have, sometimes I have to talk about some of the, the situations going on in the world. I try to put it out in a very light way that at least it's more informational that like people can download and digest it. But in the morning, the first thing I want to do is put out something positive to lighten up, brighten up the day, get people excited about something that was interesting, let them start sharing it around so that it becomes viral. That way, a lot of people get it. Like the other day, I made a post talking about turning your life around. It just takes little short moves. And I posted a million views. Uh, you know, so I, you know, it, it impacted a lot of people in a positive way. And those are the kind of posts I like to make in the morning. So what you said is so key. Very, very important. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. That's one of the main things I did to change my thought process. I was stuck in you know, negative thought patterns, really, really terrible after a bad breakup. And um, to change my thought patterns, I wrote something down, five things that I was grateful for right when I woke up and five things that I was grateful for right before I went to sleep. So that really, really changed my, my thought process, really made a difference. So. so in the book, I have this great technique I got from my friend, Dr. Joseph McClendon III. And um, it's whenever, like with a breakup, um, or you're feeling bad, it's four simple things. And it's gonna sound crazy, but it works. So one, feel bad on purpose, like go right into the middle of that breakup pain, feel bad on purpose, one. Two, say stop and stand up and take three breaths, just to put space in your head mm -hmm. and three, I have all of my patients write down 20 of their happiest moments in their life. Like for me, um, I got to speak at the American Airlines Arena in front of 26,000 people. And I just loved it, right? I'm one of seven, I'm third. Nobody paid attention to me when I was growing up. And it just fed me, fed my soul. Mm -hmm. um, so go to one of those magical moments in your life. And, and really bathe in it. Try to experience it with all of your senses. And then four, celebrate. 
right? Like go like this or make a fist. The, just find a way to celebrate because celebration wires the feeling into your nervous system. And then you're not a victim of the breakup or you're not a victim of getting fired or you're not a victim of somebody posting bad stuff about you. Um, you know, in my day-to-day -day life, I scam people, right? You came, got scammed. I'm a psychiatrist. Psychiatrists don't do that. So if you do something new, watch out. Someone's going to try and kill you, right? Because <laughs> you're attacking their way of making money. So yes. if you do something new, just know you're going to get haters. And mm -hmm. it used to make me so anxious and so mm -hmm. upset until I realized, oh, that's normal. This is just what happens. Machiavelli mm -hmm. in the 15th century actually wrote about it. He said, there's nothing more dangerous than to do something new because you threaten all of the people who are making money off the old system. Mm -hmm. And so when I realized, oh, this is just normal stuff, yeah. I was able to deal with it, but until I had a method, that was hard. Nice. Amazing. That's amazing, man. Powerful stuff. One last thing before you go. We had talked about briefly when I came out to see you, PTSD and PTG, um, because we were talking about a little bit of my life story. You were mentioning that you thought I had PTG. Can you just give a, a brief description of those? So when people go through trauma, and you went through intense, long-term, persistent trauma. Yeah. Um, but you didn't really develop PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. You're able to sleep, you're able to make money, you're able to look forward. You really weren't haunted by the trauma. Um, about 10% of people go through trauma, develop PTG, post-traumatic growth where they actually get stronger, they get better. Many of them have a spiritual awakening. Many of them uh, are more grateful for their lives. Many of them see those lessons clearly to what they don't want. And it can really kickstart greatness. If you look at a lot of people who've done amazing things throughout life, it's not because they had a privileged childhood. It's because they were um, tested in the fire of stress. Yeah. And th that's why I'm so interested in meeting you. And I just mm -hmm. love listening to your story and seeing how I could enhance your story even further by helping you have a better brain. Yes. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Guys, this is Doc Amin. Follow him. I, I pinned his Instagram account, Doc underscore Amin, right here in the, in the comments. Make sure you follow his account. This man is dropping serious jewels every single day on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter. He's on everything. 12-time best-selling author. It sounds like this new book is going to be number 13. So please uh, get his stuff, support him. Tell, tell everyone where they can uh, buy your books. Well, actually, we have a very special offer. If you go to youhappier.com, uh, Y-O-U, happier.com, uh, pre-order the book anywhere you want. Give us your receipt. We're going to send you a free bottle of Happy Saffron, one of my favorite supplements. Oh. Um, we're going to enroll you in a 30-day happiness challenge and give you my wife's new cookbook, You Happier. Uh, so I just help us. Americans are the unhappiest they've been since the Great Depression. Uh, we need to create a happiness revolution. Wow. Thank you. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Dr. Amen. We appreciate you so much. And I can't wait to get back out to your clinic to get a full scan. I know I got the, the short one, but I'm, I really, I can't wait to get the full one. I have to, I have to dive in just like you, Billy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I hope I get to see you guys soon. Yes. Very soon. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <clears throat> amazing. All right, guys. Amazing. Yeah. Dr. Daniel Amen. Okay. Yes. Amazing. You guys yeah. have to follow him. And I'm, oh man, I forgot to thank him for writing that review for the book. Darn it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. 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 He wrote a review for your book. So, what's the name of your book? The Recipe to Elevated Consciousness. It is my recipe for 
conscious elevation. So that's how really I, uh, I got through my traumatic experiences and uh, created PTG for myself. That's right. <laughs> but exactly. That's some ways and some, some different uh, techniques that I use. But I came from, you know, a really, really crazy, crazy background, crazy time. And I was a crazy person, but I was able to really turn it around. So you yeah. did. Mm -hmm. you, really, you really, really did. That's why people need to see and read and understand the story because it's going to give hope to so many people. Mm -hmm. So many people are out there struggling with a lot of the things that you went through and they don't know how to get out of it. They don't see the way out. They think that they're trapped. Mm -hmm. My father was one of them, you know, being an alcoholic and a drug addict the majority of his life. Mm -hmm. He was trapped. He wanted, to be, he wanted to be better. He wanted to get out of it. He tried many times. He just mm -hmm. couldn't break free of different things. And it's not just drugs and alcohol. It could be anything. There's so many other traps and things that people get into and they feel like this is their only option and this is where they're, the deal, the hand they've been dealt and they're stuck there. Mm -hmm. But you took all these hands of multiple things that would literally crush the average person. Mm -hmm. And you, at some point, which you go over in the book, you said, enough is enough. I'm going to start taking steps. And it wasn't an instantaneous thing, but you worked hard. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard work. You worked hard to get to where you are right now mentally, yeah. and so I think that because the way the way you listed after I read the book, the way you listed all of the the recipe, you yeah. laid it out step by step for people. Which I wish I would have had this book to 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 give to my dad, you know, mm -hmm. when he was alive. I wish I would have had it to give it him twenty, thirty years ago. It would have freed him from those chains, those mental chains that he had. Yeah. So this is a real important book. I'm really happy and I'm so proud of you that you were able to get this done and put it out. It's on pre-order right now on forbiddingknowledge.com with the number four. Uh, and you can also get it on Amazon probably on March 1st. It's an amazing piece of work and uh, you, you did a great job. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, um, it's pretty transparent. So I really, you know, talk a lot about what I've been through and what I've done. So really, you know, something about, about really getting over your trauma is accepting that you are the reason that you had your trauma. So it took me facing myself and, you know, really looking in the mirror and seeing what was, uh, you know, really going on with everything that was in my life. And, you know, just um, the recipe is there. So, I mean, I think there's over 30 different holistic modalities that I use to try to clean myself up from the drugs, the alcohol. I mean, I started drinking and doing drugs young young i started drinking when i was 11 so <laughs> yeah wow mm -hmm. yeah. Long, i long mean day. you know a lot of the stuff that i found out was and you told me all of this or you know during, when we were courting and dating but a lot of it i just was still scratching my head like i, I don't know this is too this is too because the person you are now is like i can't even envision it and then when i when i got to meet your mom for the holidays yeah. she double confirmed everything yeah. she's like yeah man um <laughs> wow <laughs> So uh, yeah. you really did a phenomenal job because I can't even detect that other person. I, I don't even, I can't even detect it. It's, it's incredible. It's incredible, you know, really yeah. incredible. Yeah. Well, it's trauma patterns. I mean, when your body gets stuck in, in a stress response, you're really not acting as, as you should act, you know, mm -hmm. you're acting out of reaction mode and, you know, when your anger cups or your stress cups get too full, it starts spilling over in inappropriate ways and you just unleash in inappropriate ways um, onto people that don't deserve it because you have no control between stimulus and response. So what these modalities do is they provide that distance between stimulus and response, that space. So you now have thought process. So now mm -hmm. before I react to anything, I'm always thinking deeply about conscious, what is my conscious response going to be instead of just reaction, reaction, reaction. Therefore, mm -hmm. you know, it's just honestly a decision. I smoked cigarettes for 20 years and I wow. quit cold turkey. I was like, I just, I can't anymore. But mm -hmm. really the addiction had me, but it's just a decision. It's a yes, I'm going to pick up the cigarette or it's a no, I'm not going to pick up the cigarette. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really the strength within you and you get that from doing the inner work, the trauma, the trauma work. And yeah. you know, it's just a decision. Everything is just a decision. So you make decisions for your life that serve your life instead of, yeah. you know, cause negative, negative things in it. So. Exactly. Yeah. You are a great example of somebody that turned PTSD into PTG. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Literally. I see it. I mean, and you've done some big things in business and real estate and in other raising and fixing and 
molding other corporations and things like that. You know, you really went PTG, post-traumatic growth. <laughs> Thanks. And uh, yeah, it's amazing to see. It really is. So anyway, it was a great talk. I got to get ready for the podcast. Don't forget, guys, I'm doing a podcast tonight, 8 o'clock on YouTube at the Forbidden Knowledge uh, YouTube account and also on Forbidden Knowledge TV. That's going to be at 8 p.m. tonight. It will also air soon after on all the audio platforms as well. What, what updates do we have today? We have to give them some updates. Yeah, we have today, a few right? updates. We have a few updates. So, you guys, the, the Rolls Royce raffle, if you don't know about it. So, Billy is raffling off his old Rolls, Rolls Royce. So, you guys have a chance to win that. And that raffle is almost over. I think you're you're picking, or the, the company, the third-party company is picking on February, what is it, 19th or 20th? It's that Sunday. It ends, it, it, ends at on the, it ends at midnight Pacific Standard Time on Pacific Standard Time on the 19th, which okay. is 3 a.m. 3 a.m. Eastern. Mm -hmm. Then Sunday afternoon at Pine Ridge Park, which the website's on the, the address is on my website. Mm -hmm. uh, it's open to the public. We have to do it outside because of the sickness. Nobody yeah. wants to let us do it inside their car dealer anymore because they don't want everybody coming inside. The car mm -hmm. dealers are working on appointment only at this time, at this moment. Yes. So um, we're going to do it outside where anybody can come and anybody can attend. It's open to the public. And Raffle Creator is a third-party company that selects the actual winner. It'll be on live video. I mm -hmm. won't be selecting anything. Okay. And whoever's name is selected in that drawing will be on live. And we'll go Instagram live and probably YouTube live and probably pre-recorded record, <laughs> record so it can be edited and uploaded as a video for probably the TV network. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there'll be a winner selected. So it's $50 for a ticket. You can buy multiple tickets. You get discounts on multiple tickets. Mm -hmm. The benefit of this is even if you buy a ticket and you don't win the car, you still get six months free of Forbidden Knowledge TV with over 5,200 shows, new documentaries, and a, a slew of workshops and financial courses on there that will cost you thousands of dollars. You get access to all of that if you buy a ticket to the raffle. So it's well worth it. It's well, well worth it. Uh, it. It pays for itself. And if you win, then you can take the car. Some people say, well, I don't want to. What am I going to do with a car that's expensive? I can't even afford to get the brakes done. Then don't get the brakes done. Drive the car to AutoNation, CarMax, or any other car dealer, and they're going to give you a check on the spot for that car. Mm -hmm. And once I, So once you assign the title over to you, you take that car and you go collect cash. Don't forget, there's a car shortage, which means that the car values have gone up. Yes. which means that car is probably worth more than it even should be. So it's a great time to give away a car because somebody's going to get a blessing. You might walk away with one hundred thirty to 150000 in cash. Right. And you can take and invest into stock market, your own business, pay off student loans or bills, uh, get out of debt, uh, flip real estate. You know, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Whatever you, whatever you see fit, you know. So it's not just like I'm giving you a car that's going to give you another, another bill. It's something that you can take and turn into instant cash and then utilize that cash to parlay it into your life and build your legacy. Yes. Yes, yeah. exactly. I mean, this is major. I mean, that's just, I don't know why, because I've helped you do this since the beginning of it, but I don't know mm -hmm. why it just hit me deeply. Like someone could really go sell this car and walk yeah. away with a hundred bands cash. <laughs> somebody's going to do it too. Somebody's going to, this is big. This is huge. Yeah. And you know what? What's amazing? This is the car that we drove to pick up that girl. Remember the, the woman that won the, the Ford that I gave away last year? Yeah, yeah. I gave away a Ford. It was a really nice one, tricked out sports package with the black rims and the black pipes. Okay. And we did it. We filmed it and everything. We went live with her and we gave her this. She, she flew in from Atlanta. We picked her up from the airport in that Rolls Royce. This is the one that I'm raffling off now. Mm -hmm. So wow. even that car now is going back into the system. And people say, well, why do you do it? Why are you giving away cars? Look. That Ford car only cost me in total probably around fifteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Now I could have gave fifteen thousand dollars to Google Ads or YouTube Ads, and I may have might have just broke even or maybe less. Mm -hmm. Okay, because those ads don't really work out that well. To be, I'm just being honest. Or I can invest the money back into the network. I can say, look, guys, anybody who's an active subscriber, you have a chance to win this car. That's how I did it. I got a lot of subscribers off of that promotion, and the benefit was I was able to share the. The, the money back into my own people that support me yep. versus yep. giving it to some multi-trillion dollar corporation, then the money just vanishes into their pockets and my people get nothing. You see what right. I'm saying? Right. And so with the raffle, it's the same thing. How can I 
you know, I've been doing that thing. You already know what we do every year. It's going to add it. It's getting uh, Ray, our pro web designers, adding it to the website tomorrow. We do a, we do a, a thing where we, we pay people's electric bills, final notice only for single parents. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to turn it back on now that we have all these cold freezes and all these snow flurries. Kids are freezing in their beds yeah. right now, yes. literally. Yeah. And so we're going to go in and pay some final notice electric bills. Well, where's that money coming from? I've been putting it out of my pocket and we had, a couple of GoFundMe's that raised about a couple thousand. The rest of it I put in. This time, I'm going to use some of the money from the raffle. Right. Okay. The book bags coming up because kids' book bags and their school supplies they only last for half a year. So now, be coming into the second half of the year, more book bags, more school supplies for the kids. We bought mm -hmm. a whole bunch of uh, uh, holiday gifts as well with some of the money that we took in from the raffle already. We I posted that on this account, and it's on forbidden giveaways. We gave away. Tons of gifts, yes. right? Uh, we did the book drive. I spent two thousand two hundred dollars on shipping for all these prisons, the books to all the prisoners that we shipped out for the people who donated books and the books that I donated. The shipping alone was twenty two hundred dollars. But the money went towards that. So it's 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 giving back in a way. I'm getting this car to give back to people in a way that nobody would have ever even thought of. You know, normally you take a car, you trade it in, and then. You let the car dealer rob you for what they're going to give you for the next car. You end up losing. You don't even realize you're just so desperate to get the new car. You end up losing sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. And so I realized, how can I make this car do something great? How can I, you know, this car paid for itself. It was a car that I bought. I leveraged my credit, and I turned that car into an exotic car rental. Uh, the Ritz Carlton was rented out in Naples, Florida. And that car would make me $900 a day. I would rent it out for 15 days. It's almost 15 grand a month I was making off that car. After you make the car payment I'm in, and their car insurance, I was keeping about 11,000 bucks a month in my pocket. Mm -hmm. I just used that money to pay down on the principal, you know? And um, so the car really was a car for me that didn't cost me any money whatsoever. Plus, I got to write off a lot of taxes on that car because of the weight of the car and the cars in my company name. So I, win, I won on that car. I won. Everywhere you could think of, I won, right? Mm -hmm. So I said, how can I make this car do some good? I could take it and trade it in, or I can just, I know I can get myself another one, which I ended up doing. I got another ghost, uh, and I said, let me raffle this one off, you know? And now even that new ghost that I got, which was an 18, I ended up selling that for more money than I paid for it because uh -huh. of the car and I got a 2021 Rolls Royce ghost just the other day, which, you know, we've been driving around in. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, listen, it's all about knowing how this matrix works out here. You know, parlay. You know how you gotta know how to play this game, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, but I, so I don't shoot Elizabeth, you might witness. I don't go out of my I don't drain my bank account to buy these elaborate things. No. no. I don't do it. Uh -uh. I find ways to generate other so income streams or either have these things pay for themselves, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Even exactly. in twenty one. No, I have a driver now, right? So my driver has other clients, not just me. Right now, I'm here in California, getting ready to go to work and do these this whole weekend worth of lectures and workshops and TV commercials and stuff I got to film. Mm -hmm. My cars are at home making me money. Yeah, He's driving clients around uh -huh. in my cars, and they're paying big dollars yeah. for him and, and, and so somebody driving that I know and trust. Mm -hmm. And those cars are paying for themselves, and I'm over here. I'm making money while I'm sleeping. I'm making money while I'm working on other projects. Mm -hmm. So it's all about understanding how to navigate this financial matrix. Like I made a post on my account. I showed myself standing in front of all five of my cars. I had three Rolls Royces and uh, a, a 2021 Mercedes and a 2021 uh, Escalade. And it said, a pocket watcher sees materialism, but an entrepreneur sees $4,800 a day income from exotic car rental. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, one thing I really, I really admire about you that is just different from anyone that I've ever met ever is that you really, you, you, I, you can manipulate the financial matrix in a way that I've never seen anybody <laughs> do it before. And then the way that you do it benefits your whole community, which is different. It's different because you figure out a way to spend less, make more, but yet benefit the people that, that follow you, you know, your, your community. I mean, it's so awesome. Even your idea of just doing free workshops to be able to expand your knowledge to more people this yeah. year, all of your workshops that you're doing are free this year. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, it's just, you, you do 
different stuff, but it's always very beneficial to not yeah. only yourself, but more importantly, your people that follow and support you. So I respect right. that. I and mean, I just, I just admire you. I admire that so much about you. And if people even knew, <laughs> if people even knew <laughs> the amount of, of help and just things that you do, it's just like, stop. Okay. You're, it's just, just <laughs> I know, yeah. Slow down. Yeah, sometimes I can be carried away. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't show up on the internet that I do that, you know, even sometimes I got to catch myself. Wait a minute. <laughs> you go yeah. too, too far here. Yeah. Like, I've done all kinds. I've bought people's house. I've bought people's homes. I've done all kinds of stuff. Gotten people off the street, got them into apartments, whatever. There's a lot of stuff that I do behind the scenes that people, you know, a lot of them will never even see or know about. I mean, you know now because you're with me all the time or most of the time. Um, but, you know, it's just, um, you know, I'm a giver. That's what I've always been. I always, I've always been a giver. And um, it's just part of my DNA. It's coded into my body. It's, it's what I am. So I always try to find a way to help people and give back in ways that I use innovative ways to do it. Yes. So I had to because at one point I was giving so much I was hurting myself. I was putting myself in bad situations. Right, don't do that. And I was putting a lot of pressure on my other, my you know, my my first wife. I was putting a lot of pressure on that relationship. I was giving everything away. He was like, mm -hmm. "Are you crazy?" You know, but yeah. maybe I was. So I had to really develop a certain level of balance. And but that forced me to start thinking in different ways how to maneuver. Well, if I do this, and I can benefit here, and they can benefit this way. So I started coming up with all these unique ways of getting, uh, helping people. And not not destroying myself, basically, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. When you yeah. overextend, that's a that's a trauma pattern. That's a sign of trauma. You know, when you yeah. overextend yourself and you put yourself in, into a worse situation by helping others, which mm -hmm. is never, never, ever, ever something that you should do. You all should always be building yourself and and focusing on self first because that alone helps people. That energy alone that you carry. Mm -hmm. When you're yeah. working on self, focused on self and loving self, not in an egotistical way, but mm -hmm. you know, you know what I mean. It's just oh, yeah. it exudes that that energy of positivity mm -hmm. and happiness, you know, that people yeah. need these days. Yeah, so. definitely. We need it first because just like I say, I always just use the same analogy. When you're on an airplane, the stewardess will tell you if the oxygen mask drop, make sure you put yours on first and get oxygen flowing to yourself before you help somebody else. Right. I had to learn it the hard way, but it's a true statement. It applies to everything in life. Mm -hmm. You know, so fortunately, I've been able to um, develop these unique ways. Like right now, as you know, we have the forbidden coin, the forbidden mm -hmm. coin yeah. coming out, our own cryptocurrency. Yeah. And so you can follow forbidden with the number four, forbidden, four B I D D E N coin, C O I N, on Instagram, forbidden coin. So what we're doing is every coin that comes out, they typically do what they call an airdrop. Mm -hmm. They give away a certain amount of thousands of coins yes. to uh, to people to get the hype going behind the coin and get the coin in circulation. Mm -hmm. That's a standard thing to be done. So that's not I'm doing that, but that's so that's not anything like I doing something great. I'm doing what's what's actually expected of me. But what I am going to do is I'm going to airdrop that those coins to my subscribers. Yes. So people that subscribe to my TV network, Forbidden Knowledge TV. Those are the people that I'm going to be sending out emails to all my subscribers in the next few days. Because mm -hmm. uh, the coin's actually ready already. I could, I could I could turn it on right now. I can start selling coins. We're giving out coins right now. But yes. we're putting in this program where mm -hmm. all of the subscribers of Forbidden Knowledge TV are going to be getting an email to join the Discord, my Discord, on Discord, the Forbidden Knowledge Discord, which is being, it's live, but it's being set up for the coin drop. You'll attach your wallet to, uh, you know, uh, your wallet's going to be in your Discord. It's automatically going to be when you join my Discord group. It'll be synchronous so that I can start dropping all the coins to the people who follow me, who subscribe to my Forbidden Knowledge TV network. Mm -hmm. And then we have the NFTs are almost ready. Yeah. So but wait, the Forbidden Coin, too, some, well, some of your subscribers, a, a handful of your subscribers will be getting a large amount of, of Forbidden Coin as well. So Yes. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So everybody who subscribes to Forbidden Knowledge TV gets coins, but some random people the software is going to pick it. They're going to get a lot of coins, like maybe 10,000, maybe 5,000 coins, right? Mm -hmm. So everybody will get some coins, but some random people will get large amounts of coins. And as far as the NFTs go, we have the NFTs coming out. The first batch will be due or will be created. They're already made. I'm sorry. They're made, but they're being caught. The, the, um, the uh, smart contract is being created right now. Mm -hmm. So they're in the smart contract stage, which means that they're being encoded into the blockchain 
and they're being, um, you know, you're getting these, we're getting randomized versions of the NFT based on all the accessories that it has and everything else. And the rarity are, is being created as well. So all these NFTs are being built right now on the blockchain. And now I can't give away an NFT to everybody that subscribes to Forbidden TV. That would be great, but I can't do that because that's thousands and thousands of people. But what I will do is I will randomly drop the computer program or pick randomly drop NFTs free uh, to subscribers of Forbidden TV. So if you want to be a part of these drops and get these NFTs, and I think my first NFT is probably within eight months, I can see it around $100,000 to $200,000. Oh, yeah. To be honest with you. I mean, maybe even more, but I mean, being realistic, with hundred to 200000 is a realistic number, the worth mm -hmm. of, of one of these, these NFTs because of the rarity and the way they're, where they are and the community. Uh, so if you want to be involved in these NFT drops and these crypto drops, you have to subscribe to Forbidden Knowledge TV. Uh, I'll type it in the comment right here. It's a three-letter word, four, three-letter website, 4BK.TV. Or you can click the link in my bio. Or you can go to the App Store. I'm going to pin this. I just pinned it in the comments. Or you can go to your App Store and get the Forbidden Knowledge TV app with the number four. Forbidden Knowledge TV app on iOS. Get it on Google Play. Get it on Roku. You can get it on uh, Apple TV. You can get it on Amazon Fire TV. Anywhere, any one of those locations, you'll be in the database automatically, and you'll be part of the airdrop. So, well, I know some, some people on here. I know at least one person doesn't know what an NFT is. You know, so for that person that is on here, which was me, probably even just a month ago, I'm just learning this stuff now. You know that mm -hmm. we're we're involved in it, but. Um, you have your NFT workshop, your free NFT workshop coming up February 27th, I believe, yeah. I believe it's 27th, from 3 to 5 uh, Eastern. Mm -hmm. So if you guys don't know what an NFT is or you just want to learn more about it, join that workshop. It's going to be amazing and it's free. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's free. It's the uh, NFT and blockchain masterclass taught by me yes. February 27th this month. Mm -hmm. So the link is in the bio of this account. Sign up for that. Mm -hmm. It's a free, uh, and it's on Eventbrite. You sign up, it doesn't cost you any money. Mm -hmm. And you'll automatically have to watch it on Forbidden Knowledge TV. So there you go. And uh, you learn what a non-fungible token is. You learn all the lingo, what is ether, what is gas, all these slang terms. You're going to learn uh, about building an NFT, creating an NFT, minting NFTs, uh, putting NFT out for sale, which platforms to put them out on and why, Nifty, or is it going to be on OpenSea? You'll find out about rarities. You'll find out about, you know, what is an NFT? You'll, you'll be, when you get done with my workshop, you'll be able to explain what it is. Yeah, explain and then go purchase NFTs for yourself. And then also, guys, you really want to learn about this stuff because this is the future. Regardless of what people think about what it's turning into, it is turning into that. So it's smart to, you know, have the knowledge for yourself and be ahead of the game instead of being the last person that doesn't know what it is, that wants to stick to the old ways and, you know, you just, you didn't learn about it. So it's, it, you know, really, really beneficial to, to join the workshop and just learn about it, you know. Exactly. I'm going to show you how to buy NFTs and flip them and make money flipping NFTs. Yeah. Did you tell me about, a, you talked about a woman that... What happened? It was some, a story that you read that a woman was... Oh, yeah. Have to check. Yeah. What was that? In M it was on NBC News today. Mm -hmm. uh, this 35-year-old woman only had $10 in her bank account. She was facing homelessness, living paycheck to paycheck. And she came up on a couple of bear dropped NFTs and flipped them. And then she started flipping NFTs. And within just a few months, she went to $100,000 in her bank account. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's just one of... And that's a black woman. Just one of many, many... Uh, success stories, you know, people, you know, flipping NFTs and, and you know, making some revenue, or earning some money. Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, you got young level. kids, young kids that are making hundreds of thousands of dollars by... by <laughs> yeah, there's some, there's some young girls out here making millions of dollars on NFTs. Yeah. Millions. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so... The it, subscription it, it, for 4BK, the subscription is what, $7 a month? Seven, yeah, $7.77 seven a month. Mm -hmm. and it's peanuts. It comes out to, uh, to less than 25 cents a day to watch over 5,200 conscious shows and growing. Every day there's more shows being added. There's documentaries coming out. There's 
We have 12 new shows now coming out this first quarter. They're all being filmed. Some have already just got done being filmed and are in post-editing. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be a great year for high-quality content. We have content now. The content that's coming on the platform now that's just being filmed in, in post-editing is on, you know, mainstream TV-level quality, which is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and it's awesome. You're even going to film another season of Decoders of Truth, which you just got done filming, which was amazing. Yeah. Those shows are going to blow your guys' yeah. minds. I was sitting there like, what is happening? Mm -hmm. I literally was sitting so uncomfortably on your stairs, on your staircase, like, yeah. what are they going to say? <laughs> what are they going to say next? I mean, it, <laughs> it was mind-blowing. Mind yeah. yeah. They're going to love that, that series. The series is all, we filmed the whole season. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to, it's in post editing now. It's going to be airing, I think, within two weeks. The first episode should drop. And the second season, we're going to film probably in July on site in Peru. All the ancient sites in Peru will be on site. And then we'll take that into post editing. And this is going to be all high level, high level, mainstream level production quality. It's, you know, all these series, they're costing tens of thousands of dollars to produce these shows, you know. Forty, fifty thousand dollars a show, you know, uh, you know, up two hundred thousand dollars for the documentary. I mean, this stuff is not peanuts. It's, it costs money, and which is why you have to charge, you know, seven dollars, you know, a month. You can't do it for free because everybody has to get paid. You got to pay producers. You got to pay directors. You got to pay uh, the camera people. You got to pay the lighting people, the sound people. This, you know, you got to pay for licensing for uh, any any things called cutaways to graphics, infographics um video clips that show and reenactments all that stuff costs thousands of dollars just to make a show and so you have to recoup that in some way you know um so you make it as minimal as you can but there is you know and then there's streaming fees every time you upload videos depending on how many megabytes you upload or gigabytes you upload to the server there's fees for that and every time somebody watches a show there's fees for that and every year you i've got to pay for the amazon apple ios Google Play, uh, and what else we got? We got one more that we have, one streaming, another streaming platform. Roku. So about, huh? Roku. Roku. Yeah, Roku, right. So that's 40000 a year you have to pay. I just repaid my 40000 That's 40000 a year just to have the apps. You know, then you got to pay development fee. I mean, it just keeps going. It never ends, you know, before you know it. So this is a big operation. It's not something that you can just say, hey, you know, I just want to do this for because I'm a good guy. Of course you want to do that. But at the same time, you have to make it, let it pay for itself. And then you have to have people, you have to hire workers, employees that manage it. And we have somebody that just all day long is managing the content on the network on the, and, and making sure everything is right and getting all the content into, into IMDb and getting all the image covers right, and getting all the double checking, all the captions and the con. It's a lot. It's a big undertaking, guys. You don't even you have to have a whole team just to run this thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. lot. I've been working my ass yeah. off now. Yeah, you do. <laughs> we all yeah, do. listen, you were working 16 hours a day, 17, uh, seven days a week. It seemed like 17, but seven days a week. <laughs> you know, we work every single day. Even when we go on vacation somewhere, we're still working, taking laptops to the beach, taking laptops to the pool, taking laptops to breakfast. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. It's Right so. now, because of where you're going, where your company is going, I mean, it's it's growing so massively, and yeah. just everything that you're involved in, I mean, the NFTs alone, the Forbidden Coin alone, I mean, you're doing your raise this year. We're about to go into the second raise, too, you guys, so that means that, you know, things are going to change a little bit, so I think we're still in the first round, but yeah. we're coming to the end of the first round, so after, mm -hmm. um, yeah, you guys still have a chance to invest into the company, and yeah. by Shares. And I'm so, I'm just so excited to to watch this process. One of my favorite things to do is just to go into a company and see the end, the end point, but start with the end in mind and then figure out a way to really get there and watch the whole process as it moves. And it's just been mind blowing since I've been with Forbidden Knowledge. I mean, you've just, I don't know, it's like well, just the amount of, of stuff <laughs> that, that, you know, you're involved in and make, yeah. make happen. It's just, it, it's the perfect company for me because now I know that the end goal that I see is going to happen. So I'm just mm -hmm. sitting here, you know, trying to create these systems to really make all of these things work. And I know it's yeah. going to. So I oh, mean, yeah. this, this is ground game, you guys, ground game. So yeah. I would 
definitely look into buying some shares if you don't have any right now because I, I know where this company is going. <laughs> yeah, you know, with, uh, and thank you for mentioning shares. I always forget. Their mm -hmm. shares, the link to get shares is in the, my bio. Or go to forbiddenknowledge.com and click on invest. And from there, you can go to the platform where you can actually get shares of Forbidden Knowledge. Mm -hmm. And the great news is I just got a, uh, for, for us, is that we just got the letter today from the attorney. He emailed us and the platform that within two days, all the final documents that he needs to submit for round two of the funding and the raise of shelling shares will be submitted. And then from there, it's only just a few days before they up it. Up it. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, so, you know, <laughs> like I said, round one is the best round. A lot of times you want to get in now. You can get you click, click the link in my bio and go get yourself some shares ASAP. Mm -hmm. because uh, we are now on the verge of moving up. So just a few more days, I'm, I'm anticipating probably next week we'll say, okay, now it's round two, let's go. Mm -hmm. And then there'll be a round three, and then eventually we'll, we'll get a stock symbol and go to the stock exchange, just the ultimate goal, yeah. and take everybody yeah. on up right with us, right to the top, and right. turn this thing into mainstream. Just like now you can hear people on mainstream, mainstream TV. I'm on the Travel Channel, the History Channel, the Discovery Channel, the Science Channel. We're on there talking about UFOs. We're on there talking about ancient sites. We're on there talking about, uh, you know, the ancient comedic people. Now we're talking about real ancient stories that have been suppressed. This is becoming mainstream information. So Forbidden Knowledge TV is right on time to bring, to continue to bring that information where it's full time. All we're bringing you is this knowledge, uh, you know, and uh, there's a full Egyptian mystery school on there that I did 39 episodes of 40 episodes of Egyptian mystery school which has been watched by Egyptian Egyptologists and have given me a, an applaud uh, on my work. Homegrown Egyptologists tell me I'm spot on. Yeah. And we have videos of them saying this. You can go to my YouTube channel. You know, we were in Egypt with the Egyptologists. And uh, we, we, the, we, when I go there, I'm like, I'm famous. These Egyptologists all want to take pictures with me and shake my hand. Listen, listen, okay? I became the, the picture taker for all, you and all your fans over there. I was just, you know, anytime we ran across anybody, I'm like, okay, hand out. Give me the phone. <laughs> Give me the phone. I already know what's going on. But mm -hmm. I, I find that so very, um, I just, I mean, that's amazing. Because yeah. you're not from there. You know, you just have the knowledge of that place. And you have these people that are from there that have studied this their entire lives. Egyptologists literally grown up in Egypt. They're yeah. worshiping you. And yeah. so that really shows something about the knowledge that you offer people. You know, it shows that, that you're, you're the real deal, you know, <laughs> the real deal. It was amazing. That was an amazing experience because yeah. I had been there before, but I guess I, my popularity had obviously grown since the, since the last time I was there. Mm -hmm. And this time it was like, man, you know. Yeah, yeah. They rolled out red carpet crazy. all over the place. <laughs> oh wow! It was like <laughs> everywhere we went, it was upgrade, upgrade. Give them five star everything. Give them the best. I was like, wow, what is going on here? Yeah. That was amazing. That was a that was a great blessing. And now we're going to do that great blessing and, and extend that blessing to people that come with us in October. Yes, I'm yeah. so excited for that. We literally mm -hmm. only have one spot left. Yeah. We will be taking backups, things happen, people cancel, so we will be taking, you know, backup people, but, um, you know, we, we're only allowed to take 40 total, total, so yeah. that's, that includes our, our group and you, you know, everything, so um, it's going to be an amazing trip, but the good thing is, is we're going to be doing this every year, so yeah. if you don't get to, you know, be a part of this one, there will be another one in 2023. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this one's going to be amazing. We have a camera crew. We got licenses, yeah. private access to the Sphinx, private access to the Great Pyramid, private access to Dendera. I mean, just this, it's going to be one of these first class, all the hotels we're in are five star. All the flights within Egypt are all covered. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be one of these mind blowing, life changing events. Yes. The meditations that we're going to do, we got the Nile cruise. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take over the whole DJ booth. We're going to have the, it's going to be the forbidden cruise when I get done with it. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be, it's going to be amazing. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. There is only one spot left, uh, but we will probably set up a waiting list where you don't yeah. pay any money, but you go on a waiting list just in case somebody cancels, you know, life, things happen. People get sick, people get injured, people yep. change their mind. I mean, whatever. 
we probably will create a waiting list and it'll be in the order of people that sign up in that list. So we'll go right in the order just mm -hmm. in case by the time we get to October that one or two people for whatever reason can't make it. We'll mm -hmm. fill that those spots with uh, from the waiting list. But this is the tour is pretty much full already. And uh, I mean, I, I pretty much knew it would be because this is a, a trip of a lifetime, literally, it you know. Is. Yeah, we may, we, yeah. we may do a very special short trip to Peru. Yeah. Yeah, short, uh, not a short trip. I mean, it's going to be a long trip, but it's going to be a small group. Yeah, yeah, probably only 10, 10 VIPs, probably. And we'll yeah. probably just, I don't know how we're going to do that. But yeah, because that is going to be amazing. I can't yeah. wait for that. That yeah. trip is going to be sick. And that'll be that'll be soon. I'll be in July. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it'll only be 10 VIPs. I can't really, we can't take more than 10. Mm -hmm. uh, but 10 VIPs will come to Peru. It'll be uh, me, maybe myself, uh, Matthew LaCroix, uh, Rex Beer, uh, Jay Campbell, and also the world famous archaeologist, Brian Forster. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a mind blowing tour. You're going to get some secret knowledge there that you never thought even existed. Yeah. We're going to take you places that you, you'll probably never get a chance to go to ever again. Mm -hmm. uh, not on this level, the way we're doing it, the way we're going to experience it. And it'll be filmed on site live. We'll be filming. Our, you'll, be, you'll be in the audience of the show. You'll be, the you'll show, be part right? of that, the show, the TV yes, show. You'll yeah. be seeing the show being filmed live, Decoders yeah. of Truth Season 2. So you'll mm -hmm. be sitting watching them film their show live. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Amazing, yeah, yeah. and I can't manage yeah. more than ten people, so that's why we're only bringing ten. Because you guys are yeah. gonna be working, so I gotta, <laughs> you know. Yeah, we gotta keep it small this time. Plus, it's gotta be ten people that are fit yeah. and shape, right? Because this is uh, everything from there is twelve thousand minimum to to seventeen thousand feet above sea level. Ten thousand to seventeen thousand feet above sea level. You're gonna have to be in shape. Cardiovascular got to be on point. Uh, you know, you have to be ready for that kind of pressure when there's lack of oxygen mm -hmm. and a lot of walking and hiking. Uh, you know, so you have to be somebody that's physically fit for this particular trip. You can't be somebody that's sickly or ill or injured or have different types of, uh, you know, uh, ailments because you won't be able to sustain on this trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. unfortunately. Yeah. Exactly. So we'll be putting out information about that very, very soon. So very, very soon we'll be putting that out. Uh, anything else you want to add before I hop on YouTube chat, live chat? Um, I don't think so. I think we covered everything. Did we cover everything? That's important. Yeah. And yeah, your podcast is on right now on YouTube. Yeah. So. Podcast just aired on YouTube, guys. I'm going in the live chat. Go to the T H E Forbidden Knowledge YouTube account right now. I'll be take, talk, talking to you and answering questions in the live chat right now. All right. Peace. See you later, Liz. Hi, I'm Billy Carson, researcher, speaker, and best-selling author of The Compendium of the Emerald Tablets and Woke Doesn't Mean Broke. I'm inviting you to join me on ForbiddenKnowledge.tv to enjoy hours of great programming, learn the secrets of ancient Egypt, unexplained structures on the moon and Mars, financial literacy, holistic and healthy lifestyles. Go now to ForbiddenKnowledge.tv and get three days free. While there, you can enter to win a Rolls Royce. That's ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. You are watching Forbidden Knowledge TV. Hi, my name is Billy Carson, and I'm the president of Forbidden Knowledge. We have an amazing investment opportunity here for anyone who wants to buy shares in Forbidden Knowledge. The money that's generated from this crowdfunding platform is going to be used to bring on a new content acquisitions partner. We're going to hire a new in-house graphics designer, a social media manager, a put together a customer service team and a customer service management program that will organize and satisfy all the different legs of Forbidden Knowledge Inc. As well as, and of course, make more improved high quality streaming content for the Forbidden Knowledge TV platform, which right now is featured on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, iOS and Android apps, and also of course, the web. The streaming platform is a year old right now and doing very, very well. And we're looking for your support where you can not only be a conscious customer, but also be a part owner in an amazing opportunity 
that includes streaming TV, book publishing, and e-commerce. Grow with us and earn with us. Forbidden Knowledge Inc. You are watching Forbidden Knowledge TV.